Hello. Welcome to a CodeNark screencast. My name is Hamlet Darcy. I'm here with Christoph Sperle. We're both engineers at Canoe. And Friday night is our Hackergarten, and we created a screencast about the open source CodeNark framework. CodeNark is a static analysis tool for Groovy. So what it does is it analyzes your Groovy code and reports potential bugs and potential problems in that code. There's a whole website on it at codenark.sourceforge.net. There's also an app engine application at meetcodenark.appspot.com and that will allow you to play with CodeNark rules in the browser. We're going to write our own CodeNark rule today and it's pretty easy. I think we can do it in just a couple minutes. The only thing that we've done to prepare is we've checked out the source code. On sourceforge.net there's directions on how to use SVN to get the code and then we ran maven install in the root directory. What we're going to do is create a CodeNark rule called avoid print stack trace. You can call print stack trace on exceptions to print out the stack trace. Uh, hopefully you know that as a Java developer. And you should also know that it should be avoided because there's logging frameworks and better logging solutions than simply printing stack traces. So this is a common this is a common uh, eh, problem is you'll see developers sometimes write print stack trace when they really should be using a logging framework. So our new rule is going to find and catch that when it happens and report a violation. So here I am in my CodeNark root directory. To create a new rule, you type groovy space CodeNark, there's a CodeNark.groovy script, and you pass the parameter create-rule. And it's going to prompt you for everything you need. The Java doc will automatically be generated with your name. The rule name will be, let's say, avoid print stack trace. The category, it's going to prompt you for, let's call it exceptions. It's a good category. And the description is um, avoid print stack trace, uh, use a logger. I would write a better description if this weren't a screencast, but that would bore everybody. So in the, it just created a whole bunch of files for me, about five, and it added everything I needed to subversion. There's an IntelliJ IDEA project file that's checked into version control. You can open up that file and run uh, everything you need from within IDEA. That's the easiest way to develop a new rule. You can see there are five new rules created. Uh, the only thing we need to edit here is the properties file. You see at the top of the file uh, is our new rule with our description. We just need to sort it alphabetically. I'm just going to find the exceptions category here. Here's the exception rules. Our rule starts with an A. It'll come first. Uh, delete the to-do. Voila. The first thing to do, second thing to do, is open up the test case. Here's, here's the test case that it created for us. It created a couple, uh, a couple template methods for us. There's one is to test success scenario, and the other is test that a violation occurred. Test violation. So in our success scenario, things that we need uh, called that will not fail is a print line call, should definitely not fail, <laughs> uh, print stack trace with a parameter should not fail because that's not the API on the exceptions. Uh, and what should fail in the test violation here, I'll make this bigger, is print stack trace. Now print, dot print stack trace and this dot print stack trace are the same. So it doesn't really matter which one we call. Here I've created two different violations. Uh, let's say the assertion here is assert uh, two violations. The parameters for this method are the source, which is the script I just created, and then it's going to take information about the violations. The first, the first is the line number that the first violation occurs on. It's line two. It's going to second parameter the string. Three. Let me just get the compile errors out of the way. The first, the first violation is uh, on the this print stack trace call. The second violation is just on the stack trace call. So this is just a helper method to make some assertions. And let's say the message of the violation should be avoid print stack trace, uh, use a logger instead. 
So this is just a simple test that asserts that two violations occurred. I'm just running it now. And you can see that when I run the tests, indeed it says expected two violations and found zero. And our success scenario, of course, passed because there's nothing that's going to fail our success scenario. So getting to the production code now, uh, this, is, this is the code, the template that it creates for you. It creates a rule and it creates a visitor for you. CodeNoc rules are written against the abstract syntax tree of Groovy and everything in Groovy, all of the uh, constructs, all have a, a node or a um, AST node that uh, is generated for it. So a method calls have method call expressions, closures have closure expressions, and how you work with AST is you interact with visitors. So it's a standard visitor pattern. I can hit control O here to see all of the methods I have to override and there's quite a bit of them. You can see visit statement, visit block, visit do while. The one we're really interested in is called visit method call because we want to method call expression Yep. Um, because we want to trap this condition when that specific method call is invoked. Uh, and of course you want to continue walking so you always want to call super when you're doing this. Uh, the super visit method call uh, so that anything in a tree is continued to be walked. So if you have uh, deep nesting and if statements and things, um, it'll it'll walk the entire tree of your code. So basically, if the call is um, print stack trace, then what we want to do is add a violation. First parameter is our node. Second parameter is our uh, message, the string message. We had this from the unit test. Avoid print stack trace, use a logger instead. I'll just copy and paste that in. I just am in video, copying and pasting code. Uh, and the conditional here, I happen to know that there's an AST util uh, utility class in CodeNARC, uh, and it has about 30 methods that you should get to know if you're writing these things. AST util is method call, is method named, is a function that can help us. The first parameter is our call. The second parameter is the method name. Print stack trace. And the third parameter is the number of arguments. It's optional. And we want to make sure that this only occurs when no arguments are passed into this um, method. So I'm running the tests. There we have it. All five tests pass and I'm done with the rule. It's a very simple rule. You can certainly do more complex rules, some of the more complex rules we have, analyze return paths. Um, the null checking is very interesting to look at. This is a simple rule and we picked a simple one to show you what it, what it looks like to develop a rule. So at this point we're genuinely done. We have on our change list here uh, these five files. What I'm going to do is right click and do create patch. And this is called the print stack trace rule. That's the name. I'll click Create Patch. It'll prompt me for a name. And now I have that file on disk. What you can do now is go into the CodeNARC um, bug tracking system and click Add a new, Create a new feature or uh, Request a new feature. And if you attach this patch, then the developers will be able to um, merge it back onto the source. And the next ver version of CodeNARC will have this new rule in it. So that's it. I think it was about four minutes. We created a new rule and we contributed to so open source. So thanks everybody for listening. Bye.